Sydney McLaughlin. Um, she, you know, she ran this. She ran this fifty-two-seven. Nobody else on the planet is even close. Um, and now she has shut down her season. Um, I also hear reports that she's going to be looking for a new coach because um, apparently her coach Edric Florial and her have parted ways. He's also parted ways with Omar McLeod um, and a couple of other people in that camp. So that's. That to me is very intriguing because now I go, okay, so she had the phenomenal high school career. She went to UK um, under uh, Coach Flo and was doing really well. And now she has to transition to the seniors, do it for a living. Um, She's about to make a lot of money. Um, But then she's got to start in that three-year cycle of Worlds, Olympics, Worlds with a new coach. And who's that coach going to be? And, you know, she's still, you know, just a teen. She's about to turn 19. So um, I just I, I just think that's amazing. Um, and I think that what she has done this year has almost been overlooked. But uh, I haven't I haven't overlooked it. And I think the, the you know, that world record in the 400 meter hurdles for women, I think its days are are numbered. Maybe it got a little reprieve because she's going to have to switch coaches and who knows what that transition is going to be like. But Sydney McLaughlin and what she's done from, you know, from 200 all the way up to 400 hurdles in 2018 um, is nothing short of amazing. There doesn't seem to be that many hurdle coaches, right, in the United States and especially that many who are at that level. Right. I can probably count on one hand if I had a, you know, if I felt like I had a great 400 hurdler who was capable of of breaking the record. Um, who I would, you know, think, you know, this is somebody you would go to. Um, you know, certainly um, uh, Boogie Johnson out in uh, out at Northridge, who's done a phenomenal job with Dalila Muhammad. But you know, is, is is she gonna go out there with you know with her? Probably, you know, it's almost like Kevin Durant joining the Warriors. It's like, uh, do you want to go out, you know, do you want to go out there with your, you know, somebody who probably is, is your chief opposition to getting the gold in, in Tokyo? I don't know. But that story is one that I'm going to follow. And a couple of days ago, she signed with William Morris Endeavor. It's a big deal agency based in, in Beverly Hills. Uh, you trained a lot in L.A. You know, you know that scene. I mean, what does that signify to you about her and her career that she's signing with with this this group um it's actually my old agency it's oh. um img and william morris endeavor joined forces um and it's actually my old agency i'm actually now with caa but um what it signifies for sydney is I understand that my brand is going to be bigger than just track and field. And anybody who's been around this sport for a very long time understands that. So um, as far as I know, she has signed with uh, West Felix, who is Allison Felix's brother and and agent and manager. Um, And he will handle the track stuff. But the job of, you know, William Morris Endeavor at this point is to take this spectacular performing young American star and go and get her non-track and field money, not shoe company money, not the typical things that, you know, athlete A or athlete B in track and field would would typically have. This is, you know, they're not out there looking for, you know, for Tiger Bomb endorsements. This is, you know, (laughs) Amex. This is, this is Clairol, Maybelline. This is the, the stuff which quite frankly, I wish more of our, um, athletes would would have a shot at but typically in america just the very very top um get to pick at those sort of uh, at those sort of heights but it's going to be very exciting because to me i thought about it and i said sydney mclaughlin is about to be what flojo would have been if she was starting out right now in this era where she has the look she has the performance it's about to be um, an Olympic Games where she is likely to dominate. Um, she's not in the 100 and the 200, obviously, um, but I just feel like it's going to be an ex- exciting time to watch her rise. Yeah, she's not in the glamour event, but I think the fact that she's in an event where the world record is actually possible is is working to her advantage, right? Because if she ran the 100, you get the gold and that's great and it's the glamour event and nothing can ever replace that, but a close second is getting a world record. Cause I think that's, that's currency with a mainstream audience. 
America will make her into the star of the games regardless um, because the 200, the 200 meters was never uh, a glamour event and neither was the 400. But when Michael Johnson was the greatest track athlete on the planet, um, it, it, you know, they, it got it got it got skewed in that direction. So I that's the last thing she should worry about. You go out there, you break the world record as a teenager, mm-hmm. and you put and you put those stars and stripes um, up against your back behind you. You're not gonna have to worry about uh, about if your event is a glamour event because you will be on so many Wheaties boxes and you will be on on so many um, on so many billboards that I don't think it's gonna matter. In America will fall in love with the 400 meter hurdles. Watch. She has that power, you think? Oh, there's no question about it. I got to ask this question. You know, Jason's not here, and he's, well, we both love doubles, but you and Jason have a great history of discussing doubles on this podcast. Do you, I know she's probably not, she's not going to do the 400 and the 400 hurdles, but is there any question to you? Well, what do you think her, her progression will be in events? Do you think it's all on the 400 hurdles next year and then potentially later on in her career she could, she could shift to the open four? The 200, like, wh- where do you think her career will go event-wise? Yeah, I think um, I have a pretty good idea of what company she's she's going to sign with. And um, that company likes people to double. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I would say that, yeah, they may not force her to double or encourage her to double um, in 2019 or 20, but... Hmm. Where are the next Olympics? 2024. We go to Paris, and then right when she's really in her prime, mm-hmm. the Olympics are in America. I would be shocked if she's not doing two events there. So, um, yeah, I, I think we will eventually see her double. What event she'll double at? I don't know. I don't know if she wants to go in that quarter right now with the way that uh, Sawa Eid Nasser of Bahrain looks. Um, with the way that Shawnee Miller, who is just coming into her prime and just broke 49 looks. But if you told me that Sydney McLaughlin could not break 49 seconds for a 400 if it was her main focus, I'd say I disagree. So it's not like she has no place in those events. It's just that I think it's a tough task to take on now. So it's like establish your sort of, you know, sort of what Allison Felix did, right? She won the 200 in the 2012 uh, games, yeah, she doubled in the 100, but I think a lot of people understood that she was just really keeping herself sharp for the 200, having lost to Veronica Campbell-Brown uh, for the for the two Olympics before that. Um, but, you know, she really made a serious attempt um, at the whole 200, 400 thing um, in Rio, although she never got there because of the, because, of, you know, because she never got through the trials. I mean, not just say because of the injury. Um, so yeah, I would, I would expect to see her doubling at some point down the line. Where, where is she different than Felix in terms of her ability to, to catch on, um, nationwide and worldwide as a global star? Um, I think she has a more, she's a more natural extrovert. Um, Allison has come a long way. I've followed and known Allison since she was in high school. And Allison now is as comfortable in front of a camera as, as anybody else. But it wasn't always that way. Um, in fact, I, I remember that as a broadcaster, we have sort of an internal joke where we said, if you're interviewing Allison, you be sure you have the next question ready because you may ask her the first question and she'll answer it to you in three seconds flat. So. <laughs> I just, so Allison, I don't think was a natural extrovert. She 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 improved and she got there, and and now people know what Allison sounds like, and and they love her on camera. Um, with Sydney, since the very first time I saw her running indoors, I think it was like at the New Jersey indoor uh, high school state meet, I just went look at the personality. I mean, she is. She is everything that, I mean, those people who get to rep her at William Morris Endeavor must be just like chomping at the bit, salivating at being able to put that personality, that face, that performance um, in front of an advertiser because they are going to, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna back Brinks trucks up to William Morris Endeavor, I think. Um, to sign to sign Sydney McLaughlin, she is she is as perfect, I think, a spokesperson as we have had um, on the women's side of this sport. Maybe 